These are the basics that every hacker should know before even trying to hack. Once you have a good grasp on everything in this section, you can move into the intermediary level. And if you don't see the fundamental skill to become hacker in my YouTube video, I recommended you to pause this video and watch the video I will put in description. Today in this video we will talk about the intermediate skills to become hacker. Mark my word I am not saying fundamental skill. Before we start, please do subscribe to our YouTube channel. It doesn't cost you anything but a click but it really helps us bring you great content like this video. Thanks a ton. I really appreciate that. Okay, so the first intermediate skill you need is scripting. Without scripting knowledge, you will have to use other hackers' tools. This limits your efficiency. Every day a new tool emerges, its effectiveness diminishes as security administrators develop countermeasures. Programming skills are essential to becoming an effective hacker. To develop your own unique tools, you will need to become proficient in at least one of the scripting languages, including the Bash shell and at least one of Python, JavaScript or Ruby. I recommended to start with Bash shell and Python. The second skill is Web Applications Web applications are probably the most fertile ground for hackers in recent years. The more you understand about how web applications work and the databases behind them, the more successful you will be as a hacker. In addition, you will likely need to build your own website for phishing and other nefarious purposes. Phishing is a type of social engineering where an attacker sends a fraudulent message designed to trick a person into revealing sensitive information to the attacker or to deploy malicious software on the victim's infrastructure like ransomware. The third intermediate skill is Database Skills If you want to be able to proficiently hack databases, you will need to understand them and how they work. This includes the SQL language. I would also recommend mastery of one of the major database management systems such as SQL Server, Oracle, or MySQL. Database skill are ability and knowledge that are required for database-related roles such as database development and database administration. This is a large and diverse area of IT skills that may be specific to a particular type of database such as relational or NoSQL database. The fourth skill is Covering Tracks Covering track is to do things that hide your activities from other people so that they cannot find out what you have been doing. For example, if you transferred money illegally into other your own account and then tried to cover your tracks by destroying the computer records. To be a good hacker, you must avoid getting caught. You can't sit in a cell for five years and become a professional hacker. The more you know about digital forensics, the better you can avoid and evade detection. The fifth intermediate skill is Advanced TCP IP Transmission Control Protocol or Internet Protocol is not a single protocol. It refers to a family or suite of protocols. The suite consists of a four-layer model, Network Interface Layer, Internet Layer, the Transport Layer and the Application Layer. The beginner hacker must understand TCP IP basics, but to rise to the intermediate level, you must understand the intimate details of the TCP IP protocol stack and fields. These include how each of the fields flags, window, DF, TOS, SEQ, ACK, etc. in both the TCP and IP packet can be manipulated and used against the victim system to enable man-in-the-middle attacks, among other things. The sixth skill is Cryptography Cryptography is the science of protecting secrets. As a result, it's designed to make it impossible for an unauthorized party like a hacker to gain access to the protected data. While early encryption algorithms had significant flaws and were easily broken, the state of the art in encryption has gotten a lot better. That being said, cryptography can be broken under the right circumstances. Although one doesn't need to be a cryptographer to be a good hacker, the more you understand the strengths and weaknesses of each cryptographic algorithm, the better the chances of defeating it. The seventh intermediate skill is Reverse Engineering The term reverse engineering refers to the disassembling of an object, following a thorough examination of its construction so to understand how it works to duplicate or upgrade the object. Taken by older industries, the practice of reverse engineering is now widely used in the software engineering sector. 
In this digital information age, reverse engineering has become a tool that can be used as a way to create compatible products as hacker viruses that are cheaper than the existing ones or even free in some cases, uniquely modify the software, and exchange knowledge as a result into making better, more reliable, and secure products. The use of reverse engineering is also greatly exercised to identify malicious content in the source code of a software, such as viruses, or to expose security flaws such as backdoors, virus, misconfigurations, and address possible privacy issues. Researchers can also use this technique to reverse engineer malware to understand how it works to nullify its properties, identify the potential owner, and use the knowledge gained to update their virus databases and prepare mitigation measures for future malware attacks. Reverse engineering enables you to open a piece of malware and rebuild it with additional features and capabilities. The eighth intermediate skill is Problem Solving Skills Problem-solving skills help you determine the source of a problem and find an effective solution. Although problem-solving is often identified as its own separate skill, there are other related skills that contribute to this ability. Some key problem-solving skills include Active listening Analysis Research Creativity Communication Decision-making Team-building Problem-solving skills are important in every career at every level. As a result, effective problem-solving may also require industry or job-specific technical skills. A hacker is always coming up against seemingly unsolvable problems, requiring the master hacker to be accustomed to thinking analytically and solving problems. This often demands that the hacker diagnose accurately what is wrong and then break the problem down into separate components. This is one of those abilities that usually only comes with many hours of practice. The ninth skill is think creatively. Creative thinking means thinking outside the box. Often, creativity involves lateral thinking, which is the ability to perceive patterns that are not obvious. Creative thinking might mean devising new ways to carry out tasks, solve problems, and meet challenges. It means bringing a fresh perspective to your work. This way of thinking can help departments and organizations be more productive. There is always a way to hack a system and many ways to accomplish it. A good hacker can think outside the box and gain access. The last intermediate skill is Persistence Persistence is the ability to stick with something. Hackers must persevere. If it fails the first time, try again. If it fails, consider a new approach and try again. Only with perseverance can you crack the most secure systems. I hope this video has given you some pointers on what to learn and master if you want to advance to an intermediate level of hacking. Again, don't forget to watch the fundamental skill you need to become hacker. You don't need those 10 skills to become master hacker but that is good to know those skills so keep that in your mind. I make video about hacking so don't forget to subscribe and like this video. See you soon.